know it's been a while since I made a video. Sorry about that. Life gets in the way. As most of you know, most of you have other things to do, and lives and families and all that kind of stuff. You have to take a break from this stuff every once in a while. Not that I got tired of it, not that I really deserve a break, but other things that were more important uh, kind of got in the way. Anyway, enough of an excuse. So I'm going to be starting a tutorial here on airbrushing. Uh, this is going to be the little critter that we're going to airbrush right here. This is a um, cold one, I believe, and I think this one's a Saurus yet. It definitely is because uh, it's got the little Incan poochmajigs on it. Um, uh, this model has been assembled, obviously, and glued in. And one thing is you may notice and you may see from quite a few things. I know. I'm a horrible modeler. I'm not very good at filling in stuff and, and really getting that to look good. But I'm going to give it a shot on on another one. Uh, this one right here we're just going to use as is uh, just for sake of, of showing you the actual airbrushing. Before we get started, I just really want to give a really heartfelt thank you to some of the folks that have been out there and have subscribed to me and have left comments. Um, uh, this particular video series is on a comment that was posted. I really don't have a lot and you know maybe that's because I'm a hack and it's not very good but um, I really need kind of a call to arms from you folks out there. If you like the videos that you see, if I do a good job or if I don't do a good job, there's other things you would rather see, things that you want me to cover, um, and just kind of how-tos more in general uh, tutorial, or maybe you saw uh, something off my gallery from my website and say, hey, I really like to know how you did that. What's the color scheme on that? Whatever it is. I really need some interaction out there. Uh, I've been on YouTube for a little while. I got about 500 views, something like that, about 20 something subscribers, and that's fantastic. And all you that, that have done it, it, it's really great, but very few comments. And I understand I'm asking you to take a few seconds out of your life to, to write down a comment. And I understand in, in internet terms, that's a lot of time. Um, so if you can, please leave a comment. Let me know what else needs to be done. Uh, I'd like to rather take my direction from you guys out there because obviously everything that I do I already know how to do it um, it doesn't really help me necessarily to, to do it over and over and over but if there's something out there that you've seen or like me to figure out how to do or that I already know how to let me know so I can get started on it okay so there it is um, just kind of a uh, give me a give me a, some help out there and uh, we're going to get started on this airbrushing tutorial. Now I'm going to go through some very, very basics because the gentleman that asked for it wants some very beginner level type stuff. So just like I did before, I'm really going to go through really, really slow and uh, hopefully it will be of use to you guys out there. So before <coughs> excuse me, we get started, we need, um, of course, the most important thing before we start some beer, right? Mm. Ah, uh, that's wonderful. Okay. So, airbrushing. Let's go over a few things real quick about airbrushing as he falls down again. When do I need an airbrush and when do I not need an airbrush? I would say if you're going to paint uh, some critters like this little guy here that's probably too black and you can't see it, and you have four of them to do and four of them is going to round out your army, and that's all you're going to do, then don't do it. Don't get an airbrush because the investment is uh, substantial and you want to get an airbrush really for two reasons. A, because you're going to crank through a lot of things um, and you really need the assist of the airbrush. Although I will say at least in this regard that may not be the best reason to get it either because if you're just using an airbrush to base coat, if you're just using an airbrush to prime, like a plenty of spray cans out there that are a heck of a lot less than your investment in an airbrush and you really don't need one necessarily but if you're really cranking through a lot and and you want to do certain things then I would say you do need an airbrush if you want to do some good blending and some some shadowing and some different techniques and you only have a few models then I would say no because is it really well again that's up to you but is it really worth it is the investment really worth three or four or maybe even 20 models. But if you're going to be doing this thing for uh, a long time, you're going to be doing a lot of models or you take commission jobs every once in a while like I do or whatever it is, or, and you want to do things like this. Now, some of you guys have already seen this um, as I put it out of focus. I'm going to put this thing on autofocus. 
so it can not focus in on anything, which is it regularly does. But if you've seen this here, uh, there we go. You can see how the transition uh, from the light to the dark on the bottom is um, is quite good. And again, that's not because of necessarily my skill. That is really because of an airbrush. So that's kind of what airbrush gives you, you different capabilities. So that's the real reason, because you have enough models to actually do and warrant the, the cost of getting an airbrush, and you have um, the desire to have a new capability set. If you're really good at a brush, and there's some guys out there that brush like the, uh, what was that painting clinic guy, I don't even know his name, uh, Dr. Faust, I think he is, which by the way, uh, Dr. Faust, since you even don't describe, but if you haven't checked him out, please do. He is, in my opinion, the best guy out there when it comes to really teaching you how to do stuff. I, I really enjoy watching his stuff. He has some great things to uh, to impart upon uh, guys who do painting. Anyway, um, so that's what it's all about. If you, if you can do all this stuff by hand and you don't need an airbrush, then don't get one. But if you want to do some neat things, um, then again, do. Now, some of you may have seen or may not have seen, excuse me, um, the Minotaur job that I did. And this probably, again, won't focus. I'll put it here on the, uh, look at that. I actually think this thing is focusing not too bad, huh? Anyway, you can see this as I kind of turn it, twist it around. I got a lot of lights off because I want this to be clear and I'm not really good at studio work, but uh, this less light seems to work. But you can kind of see this. It's actually very, very nice. And if you look at the Minotaur himself, if you look at it from an angle this way, it almost looks it's like totally black, right? Or dark, and it doesn't look like much of anything. But as I turn it this way, you'll see that the shadows and the lighting source um, have a much different effect. Here on the face, they do as well. Again, all this stuff is on my gallery off my website, and uh, you just follow the YouTube link to my gallery. Uh, or to my website, you can see all this stuff. But anyway, these are the sort of things you can do. So first thing you may ask, all right, Hack, you sold me. I want to go ahead and start airbrushing. What do I need? That's the first thing, right? What do I need? And I think before you actually ask what do you need, you're going to ask how much are you willing to spend? This is a very important question that I, had, I myself had to come to grips with before I even began um, down this road. You will see in a lot of other sites uh, people saying, you know, a decent airbrush, just the airbrush itself is like 500 bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks, and it makes it seem like you spend $800 doing this thing. And I tell you what, I don't make enough money off of commissions or selling my stuff off of eBay to, to warrant getting a $500 brush. Okay? You don't need to spend that much, but you are going to have to make an investment. And we're going to go over the things that you need to invest in right now so that you know what you're getting into. Number one, obviously, you're going to need an airbrush. I actually have two. Um, and I'm going to go over the airbrushes here in a second. But this one's an Iwata. I got this from, I think, Hobby Lobby. And uh, Hobby Lobby always has like coupons and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's 40% off. And so I think the price that I actually paid for this thing was around $40, OK? So 40 bucks for an airbrush, not 400, 40. Uh, this airbrush right here did this. Okay? Um, I would expect that finer airbrushes or more expensive airbrushes you can do even finer detail, but guess what? I haven't put the money in, so I can't really say for sure. This one does a fine job just where um, I need to go. So for right now, that's all I need. And I do have a second airbrush, and I want this off of eBay like so many other things, right? This airbrush right here doesn't even really have a brand. It's an HD 470. It says .2, and the .2 refers to something. I'm going to get into all these uh, details here in just a little bit. But uh, the, uh, the .2 right here is kind of a lie on this one because it sure as heck ain't very fine. This is kind of a high volume, uh, spray a whole bunch of color out, uh, just tear through the paint type of airbrush, which has its uses. It really does. Um, and I recommend almost having two, a, a fine detail one and kind of a rough detail one. Um, really good to have around. 
So you need your airbrushes, and like I just said, I spent, oh, sorry, I got this stuff at eBay for $15. Okay, so 15 bucks here, and and about 40 bucks here. Now let's say you're not gonna get two, you're only gonna get one. Okay, so we have $40 so far. When you buy an airbrush, okay, make sure you shop around and you get something that has replacement parts available where you can get it. If you're okay with buying replacement parts off of the, uh, off the internet, then that's great. Um, but uh, make sure you can get them because this does have pieces to it and if they do wear out or you do lose them and you got it from somewhere you're not going to be able to uh, get at those parts then basically one bad part means you lost your airbrush okay however in the case of something like this a cheapo from i think this probably came from china i'm only guessing um well what does it matter right because the needle for this thing is probably more expensive than i pay for the airbrush itself um, so uh, in this case, it's okay if it breaks because it's 15 bucks and it's going to last a while. These things are not like super fragile. People, oh, watch out for your airbrush. It's going to break on you, yada, yada. They're not that fragile. You could drop this thing on the ground. There's a few pieces you have to be concerned with, and I'll go over those. Um, all right, so your airbrush. The next thing you need is a hose. Here's a hose. Okay, guys, and I need to let you know, if you buy an airbrush, get it with the hose get it with the hose this stupid hose right here was 30 bucks it was almost as expensive as my friggin airbrush so most airbrushes come with hoses not all of them do and the connector is different okay there are different brands out there they have badger awada um pache there's some other brands out there okay almost all of them have different connection sizes this happens to be an eighth inch right here which is a little more universal than the other ones off the iwata uh, so the hoses are a little bit easier to find, um, but just be be conscious of the, the connector size and the hose you buy. They are going to be, I won't say unique, but they're, they're not universal. So watch out for that. The other thing you're going to need is an air compressor. You need something to shove the, uh, the, the paint through and you run the airbrush, right? So you need a compressor. How much compressor? This is where the big bucks come in, okay, guys? Uh, you can spend lots and lots of money, but again, my favorite place, as you may uh, have already figured out, is eBay. I bought a compressor with an air tank for $85 off of eBay, and it came with a regulator um, and a, uh, a, water, uh, a water separator as well. And I'll give you a little shot of it here real quick um, as I kind of fumble everything around. This is a little impromptu of a video, so excuse me if it's... Uh, if it's really bad and poorly done. So here's my big mess, right? And rag goes around about that. This is right here is a rag for, for airbrushing, believe it or not, because when I clean it out, I dump paint into this thing right here. There, up against the wall, there is my compressor. Okay, you have the compressor itself right here. You, and this one comes with an air tank. An air tank's wonderful, which means that it doesn't constantly run because this damn thing right here, it can get friggin' hot. And if you run it, if you paint, you know, you're bad, bad like I am when it comes to painting, it takes you forever to paint something. Um, air compressor really comes in, uh, it gets too hot, and a tank really, really helps because then it doesn't run all the time. It only kicks on when the pressure in the tank gets so low. If you can find it, I recommend it. Again, 85 bucks for this, okay? Here is your regulator. This is able to set how much PSI you put through the, uh, the airbrush. That right there, which you can't see. You know, see? So it's a pressure meter. In PSI, watch out, some of them are only in kilopascals. Uh, if you know kilopascals, then that's fine. Then work with it, but, you know, just be just be cognizant of that. And then your uh, air separator. You can see I have uh, Teflon tape kind of hanging out here because these all need Teflon tape. All right? So, again, 85 bucks. So, again, if you can get one of these for 40 bucks with the... Uh, with the hose, okay, probably 50, we'll say 50 with the hose, and air compressor for, say, 90 with shipping, okay, you're in about 140 bucks deep so far, all right, you need a few other things, you need one of these, this right here is a, as messy it is, it's a, uh, an airbrush cleaning pot, it's just basically, it's a glass pot, it does have to be glass, with a little uh, cap on it, and right here it's got a filter so that when you uh, clean it out, you can spray it in here, you put it in here, pull the thing back, you spray it, all the schmuckus goes in there, and presto, bingo, you have a clean airbrush after you do quite a few things to it. Um, if you don't have one of these, you, you need one of these, okay? 
These things are way overpriced, if you ask me. They're about 20 bucks, okay? So 50, right? 50, 90, 140, 20, 160. 160 bucks is what we're looking at. Now you may say, okay, hack, and what else do you need? There's only about one other thing you really need, and um, this is it right here. I have uh, Creatix colors, but any kind of reducer um, or an airbrush fluid, this one's called a reducer, but uh, basically a, a chemical type thinner that you put to be able to mix paints is all you really need. This thing right here, as you can see, it was $4.99. Or else maybe can't. There you go. $4.99. Again, Hobby Lobby, because I got Hobby Lobby close to me. $4.99. This lasts quite a while. To tell you the truth, what I do is I put it in one of these eyedroppers and I cut it with water. Um, I label my airbrush because I'll forget if I don't. Um, you can cut it with water about 50 50 and make it last a little bit longer. Um, you really do need this stuff. And the reason you do, because this right here is not is isn't that expensive right so the eyedropper is like you know I get a pack of them for like four bucks or something like that this right here was five dollars so there's five bucks that allows me to use that type of paint this horrid stuff right here right I don't know it's that one that one is and this stuff as well you can use these paints if you don't again five bucks right already have these in your inventory at least I hope okay if you're getting starting painting don't go straight for the airbrush learn to paint first before you go for the airbrush but once you have them painting you should already have quite a few of these on board now you can buy these right Vallejo model air some type of air paint and they do have their uses and they are nice to use but to tell you the truth right now I only have them because they're different colors these right here are same price as these ones, right? Three bucks a pop. If you don't get this reducer, and it's kind of like, you know, a, um, an equation here, so you can either buy this for five bucks or you can buy yourself a whole entire new set of paints for three bucks a pop. You have 30 paints, that's $90, you know? So we were up to 160, so instead of 160 plus 90, which now we're up to 250, get this. And you could use your own paints. And I will teach you how to mix paints and all that type of stuff. So now you're only in at five more bucks. So that's 165. And guys, that's it. That's all you really need to start airbrushing. All right. Um, hopefully that, that kind of helps you on the road here to getting started. Um, I'm going to, uh, again, do a series of this. I'm going to try and go over each little step very, very um, meticulously and detailed. Uh, before we actually get to the airbrushing piece, we're going to airbrush this thing right here. And I will try and convey as much knowledge to you as I can. Not only that, but get you away from all the pitfalls and all the issues that I faced when I first started airbrushing. So you don't make the same mistakes because mistakes in this business, especially when you're buying this stuff, equals money. So if I can help you guys not have to spend extra money where you really don't need to, um, you know, you guys can learn from my mistakes, so to speak. And I think it will really help you. All right, so there you go. There's, there's part one, and we'll uh, come back here shortly for part two.